I did not get a chance to film the boat or do a video over it before I did my road trip. So what you'll see on the boat right now is all post road trip. It's kind of beat up a little bit. So I know most of y'all follow me because I'm a kayak fisherman and well now I don't own any kayaks because my old ass just can't handle it anymore. The heat is really starting to get to me in my old age. Yes, I know I'm only 31, but I'm old and I'm feeling like 40. So a very long drawn out story short, I had a short amount of time once I sold the kayaks to have something for my road trip. And I ended up with a 2018 Mako Pro Skiff 16. I was skeptical and scared because I have never owned a skiff platform. I've only owned bay boat and kayaks and I do a lot of offshore fishing and larger boats. And the flat front end scared me a little bit. But honestly, with the way Mako's designed these boats, it is probably the most comfortable ride I have ever been on in my life. So without further So without further ado, let's take a look around. Now, one of the first things I noticed when I when I went to look at the skiff, I started looking into these kind of skiffs was the uh, the underside of them. It's very unique. As you see, it's like a it's a it's like a catamaran style, but then you've got like these other little ridges in here as well. And honestly, that's the most comfortable, smooth thing I've ever ridden in. Now waves, mm, not so much, but a good flat day, this thing is smooth. Now, you will see, uh, where'd, where'd they go? There is some uh, white fixing, caulking right there and oh right there I uh I may have drilled into the bottom of the boat <laughs> when installing the battery mounts I've owned bay boats before not skiffs it's a very shallow spot right there on that ridge and a drill bit will go through so it's 16 foot by five foot wide. The only thing it came with was this little bimini top, which has been a really nice lifesaver is when you're stopped and there's no wind, that really makes a difference. It also came with the 60 horsepower Mercury, but normally it comes with the 40 horse, I believe. That has actually made a difference because that motor itself there still doesn't feel like enough power. But at the same time, I didn't know that the fuel pump was going out. Having to repair that right now, and Mercury has a problem with that, your model 60 horse. The actual fuel hold, how do they say it? The retaining pin for the, oh, microphone cord. The retaining pin for the fuel pump shaft is faulty. Like it just falls off in the engine. So it's in my engine somewhere right now. I'm gonna get the engine warmed up and uh, hopefully get it out. But apparently there's, Magnets in the bottom of the oil pans I didn't know about. My brother's the boat mechanic, not me. I can do just about everything else. All right, you got the ball sound system. I don't know why, but even when they upgrade the 60 horse, it comes with a six gallon fuel tank. And we run through that pretty quickly. So I installed this myself. This is a 12.7 gallon. I'll put the, the, the model on the bottom in case anybody's wondering what size that they can put on theirs. And the trickiest part was getting that lined up because it's so close together with the tank itself. That took a little bit of finagling. I like that word, finagle. Uh, I really do like these Orion coolers. This thing holds ice for days. I don't have any problems holding ice. Let's see what else. Got the Lowrance HDS9. Also got that from a guy on Facebook Marketplace. Brand new in the box. And guys, electronics has made a huge difference. It was a really big part of our success on Pyramid, Lake Pyramid, Nevada. There are people we talk to out there that fish that lake every year and didn't catch any fish, but I personally feel like my basic knowledge of how to run electronics and having a good electronic system, a depth finder, GPS, allowed us to all catch fish. And it was a, it was a really great experience. You'll see it in the next video coming up. I did not like the gauge pod that was on there for some of the things that I like doing. So I installed an aftermarket gauge pod, voltage readout, let's see, uh, power. 
installed aftermarket lights on the interior, uh, rewired my live well to here. Speaking of the live well on the Mako's or the Mako's gifts, there's a major flaw that I found out the hard way, because this is a brand new camera, by the way. There is no non-return valve on the live well. And even with the plug inside the live well, there is a potential, if you have enough people in the boat, which I had the recommended amount, if people are in the front of the boat, the boat will tilt forward and water will actually back in and up into the live well because it's boat sunk enough in the water. Found that out the hard way. So I bought a non-return valve and I need to install it. Some little railing setup. These are small rig hawk locks. I have these on everything, everything. It's really, really handy. I can swap all my camera equipment around. I, actually, you know what, here we go. I'll try it right here. This is the, the base off my main tripod. Let me see. So that's how it works. I have that mounted on all my camera equipment. So all my camera equipment is interchangeable between all of the mounts. I can mount my camera on my tripods, my lights on my, on my tripods. I can mount my lights on my railing here, my lights inside my truck. It's very, 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 very convenient. They're $25 a piece for each individual top and bottom. But for me, not having to sit there and mess with those little screws each time has made a huge difference. Because when you're laying a boat out as a content creator, it's completely different than just as a fisherman. And I need access to power and quick interchangeable mounts as fast as possible to limit the amount of time I spend doing those things. So small rig, hawk locks, they don't pay me for shit. I'm just telling you, that shit works. And as far as storage goes, there's really not a lot of storage. You have this main compartment here, which I kind of mounted that a little sideways, so I'm not able to completely open it. I kind of have to do the... Because the front of that boat is concave upwards, you lose a lot of room right here. So I've had to get kind of crafty with what I actually store in there, which isn't a whole lot. I do like these extendable rod holders from Dead Fishing. These are awesome. I got to finish, got a lot of unfinished projects, but I got to finish putting the rod holder mounts in there so I can mount these. Get creative in how you do that. Works perfect for me. I'm by myself most of the time. Start our lights right here in the front. I also installed the quick, the quick uh, power adapter for the, how do I say this, Haas Wing. That's the off-brand Minn Kota iPilot. It doesn't have GPS lock on this one, but it does have the remote control. And let me tell you guys, no problems, no issues. It worked great. It worked perfect. It actually did more than perfect for this little boat. I'm able to have my remote in my hand and... I can control everything from the back of the boat. It was awesome. It's about $600, which is about a third of the price for the Minn Kota. And it does exactly the same thing and I've had no issues. Also highly recommend buying the quick release plate in case you need to take it off. I had a 100, 100 amp hour lead battery. That is a very heavy battery, it's like 80 pounds. Not okay in the front of this boat. It made 80 pounds made a difference between being able to plane out and not. So what I did is I went with a 50 milliamp 50 milliamp per milliamp hour, 50 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. Twice the price, half the power, but I have yet to use that until it went dead. And it's worked great. And I'll show you how I mounted it. All right. Now it's going to look a little crazy, but it's not. So this is my main battery, my cranking battery. It's lead acid. Uh, I think it's a. 50, mil, 50 milliamp hour cranking battery. It also runs all my electronics for the gauge pod stuff right here. It's highly recommended that when you run a lithium ion for your trolling motor that you only run that specific thing on there. I got my little fire extinguisher gonna have down in there. I actually redid all of this wiring myself. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're having to go through an entire boat and redo everything and you having to make sure every, I don't buy used. I never buy anything used because I hate it. I'd rather just know something's brand new and be good with it. But when I buy used, I have to go through every single connection and make sure that I don't have any issues because I was on the road for three weeks. I went 7,000 miles and didn't have any issues until about six hours from Houston. I started having trailer issues, but trailer was a little bit older. 
put a lot of miles on it and it was about time for something to go wrong for that that long trip i was like there's no way i can make it the whole trip without something going wrong <sighs> also got every ram x mount that is a must have when it comes to the fishing world this makes all the difference what else it's five foot wide now two people comfortably yes three people can be done semi comfortably four and five can be done but you're not comfortable you're not moving very far either my biggest thing was when you buy if you get a mako the pro skiff it comes with a six gallon i highly suggest going to this 12 gallon tank oh, i highly suggest going to this 12 gallon tank because that made all the difference and there's no way i would have had to carry two six gallon tanks with me anyways for some of the runs that we were doing especially on lake pyramid uh our first run of the day was 10 miles with all the people i had in the boat the motor was cranking also had a fuel pump going out that could also have been why another issue with the makos is this little spot right here the whole drain tends to leak so i just was proactive pulled mine did some JB weld, put larger screws back in, and no issues there. Another known issue with this year Mako, the way they designed the live well pump, it kind of sits, it doesn't sit straight up and down, it sits kind of tilted on its axis like that. So it has a really hard time getting it prime. And especially if I've already got it going and it's going good, and I'm, then I get up on plane and stop again, I'll find it's lost prime again. So I'll have to come back here, reach underneath here, and then I can fill it and then I'll just kind of push some water up in there to get the airspace out. There is a fix for that. I found one guy that had a really good video and I'm gonna do a video over it as well. I think I need to get better. And then I should have no problems. So fix that, fix the non-return on the live well. And yeah, it's a great little boat, it's super light. I think I lost one mile per gallon when I was towing it. And oh yeah, 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 I've got a, uh, I got a platform for it. And I got a push pole from Hook Strong. $400 for a 19 foot carbon fiber pole, which is pristine pricing. And the platform's in the back. If I put the platform on now, it can't fit in my garage. I've got to kind of retrofit that. I am going to be a lot more active over the coming months. Me and my wife have had a huge load on our shoulders trying to get everything here at the house kind of together and in order. We bought a firearm business that we've had to kind of get in order as well. and. And all of this because I am moving to California with her for a few months. She's a travel nurse. She's over there. There's nothing else holding me here. So why not? Gonna be a Texan in Cali. Been several times. Not too fond of the laws. But not sure how that's gonna work out for the skiff in the winter. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave it here or is it even worth bringing with me. I have a friend of mine that has a kayak and it's honestly a lot easier to get into some of those places in a kayak there because the risk of the boat tipping is very high. Different world over there, different world. But it's gonna be a lot more active in the coming months. Mako Pro Skiff, if there's anything that you would like to know before you buy a Mako, like there's some questions on this one, the way I've designed it, the way I've put things together, why did I do it that way? Please leave your questions in the, in the comment box below. I will do my best to get to them as quick as I can. Like I said, I am struggling trying to catch up you'll notice in my content has been very spacey but if you're watching this video right now just know that after this video there's going to be a new video every single week for like the next four to five months which is more than i've done in about two years i'm really excited for it i'm really excited for this journey i'm really excited to go to california and be with my wife and have just an amazing time on the coast over there it's winter we do a lot more spear fishing and i'm kind of terrible at ending these things so later Oh, 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 oh,